JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for November the 4th. I am Harlan Bospisuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against the majority of the other G10 currencies on Tuesday during the Asian morning Wednesday. It underperformed the most against the Aussie, NOC, the pound and the Kiwi, while it, ga while it gained uh, some ground versus uh, the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged against the Canadian dollar. Now, the weakening of the US dollar and the yen combined with the strengthening of the Aussie and the Kiwi suggests that markets traded in a risk-on manner. EU stocks were a sea of uh, green with, um, with major indices gaining more than uh, 2%, uh, more than 2% each, as investors anticipated a clear win for Democratic Joe Biden in the US election, something that could lead to a better trade relationship between the EU and the US. Wall Street also closed higher, with futures rallying in after hours due to Trump staging a comeback. The reaction in the US dollar was a rally, while in uh, Asia, although Japan's uh, Nikkei 225 and South Korea's KOSPI were decently up, China's Shanghai Composite and Hong Kong's Hang Seng gained only 0.19% each. Remember that ahead of the election, we noted that the Trump victory could prove positive for US indices, but not for stocks elsewhere. We also said that due to the fact that Biden's fiscal agenda is looser than Trump's, the dollar could strengthen if Trump gets re-elected. Indeed, when Trump staged a comeback, the dollar rallied while the Mexican peso and the Chinese one slid. The Aussie and the Kiwi, although they were found higher this morning, they were hit uh, from uh, Trump uh, covering lost ground, perhaps due to speculation that tensions between the US and China may continue in case he keeps his throne. Remember that Australia and New Zealand uh, have very close uh, trade ties with China. Having said all that, though, the final outcome is unlikely to be known today, with uh, several key states like uh, Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania saying that they will announce the results later in the week. At the moment, Joe Biden leads uh, Trump by 224 to 213 electoral votes in a race to win 270. With a tight contest, we believe that markets will stay focused and linked to headlines surrounding the US election for the rest of the week. If Biden wins uh, more states, equities around the world may gain on expectations of a better handling of international trade, but due to his pledge to increase corporate taxes in the US, Wall Street may not uh, react in a similar fashion. His extra loose fiscal agenda may result in a slide in the dollar, while uh, his handling on trade may help risking currencies like the Aussie and the Kiwi. As we already noted, the opposite may be true in case Trump is seen victorious. As uh, for today's economic releases, we have uh, the final services and composite market PMIs from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, but as it is uh, the case most of the times, they are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. The US ISM non-manufacturing index and the ADP employment report, both for October, are, are also due to be released. The forecast for the ISM index points to a small decline to 57.5 from 57.8, while the ADP is expected to report a 650,000 uh, 650, uh, jobs gain after September's 749,000. With regards to the energy market, we get the Energy Information Administration report on crude oil inventories for last week. Expectations are for a 0 0.890 million inventory built after a 4.320 million increase the week before. 
Nonetheless, bearing in mind that the American Petroleum Institute reported an, an 8.010 million so barrel slide, we would consider the risk surrounding the Energy Information Administration forecast as tilted to the downside. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT time. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.